So here we have the lathe um, and the turret and I have a what's called a coaxial indicator here which helps me measure the center line so you can move the spindle around and this little probe at the end will tell you if you're in the center or not. Um, so this is helpful when indicating things like a pocket or twist drills or anything that's round really that you're going to be driving into the center of the spindle. Um, in this case I was noticing that at the end of the parts um, I always had a little bit of a, a um, ring I guess you could say which is just a, this is an extreme example um, but after I started cutting some stainless that went from being only you know half a millimeter or so to about two millimeters and I probably took a bit more of a, um, of a cut than I should have at a uh, reduced feed rate so essentially what that means is that while I'm working out and figuring out exactly how to machine stainless and this was also done without coolant um, probably should have waited for the coolant but I was kind of anxious to get going you can see here was a test part of the piston end and it's looking pretty good um, again just other than the nose profile here which we're going to get nice and smooth um, the test cuts are coming out good this thing is cutting stainless like a champ um, but I did manage to knock my turret just a little bit out of alignment so Today's project was to take all the tools out, um, indicate it up. This way, if we if we look in the X axis, it's pretty easy to correct because on the jog wheel here, our little pendant, we can select our different axis and then jog up and down, and you can see the, the difference that it makes. Right there, we went up in the positive direction by 0.6 millimeter and now we're go we've gone down by 0.2 and another 0.2 and now back to zero so if we go from this side of the pocket it's zero and then to the other x direction it's also zero but towards the bed in this way we had to basically true up the turret so if you see turret um, and because we're on a slant bed it's a little bit different than a flat bed would be but essentially the turret had very very slightly twisted and this doesn't normally happen but um, typically happens during a major crash it would have gone out by quite a lot or in this case um, just by maybe rough handling with uh, improper speed and feed um, and turning down, actually what it was is I turned down, I have a speed override knob here on the control system and on stainless it's got to be calculated out and relatively has to be perfect. So what we had to do was just, again today project is take out all the tools for the most part, um, indicate up the, the pockets and then that'll make things like our um, part off tools and our basically anything in the turret that really needs to get to that center of you know for facing cutting off a part um, this is going to make it perfect and right now you can see this indicator measures to each mark is 0 0.0005 inches so and you can see it is approximately 0.2 of a millimeter which you can see again if I if I um, move just a little bit, we can see the indicator changing there. Um, so in any case, things are going well. We're going to make some more test parts, and um, if if all the tools are looking good, I'll I'll make a a video for each stage. Essentially, like you saw the piston before. Um, make a video of that. Once I get the other side of the piston done, which will be just threading for the handle, we'll do that. And, uh, and so on. You, you'll be able to see the progress as it happens. So relatively 
this will be uh, time well spent getting everything um, accurate and trued up. Overall, I have to say that this lathe has been relatively amazing. Um, it's mostly getting, me getting used to it. That's why I've been telling people when they ask me, you know, when can I, when can I buy machines? When are they ready? When are they ready? The real answer is they're ready whenever I feel that they're ready and whenever the, the quality of the parts is up to my standard. I want to make them as, as good as I possibly can with this machine and with, in general, with my skill, but more or less, um, I will be tweaking the program as I go. I will be changing little, little parts here and there, little chamfers, very small things. Um, they may not seem to really matter, uh, but I think they will matter, you know, over time for fit and finish, and I'll be able to just give a lot higher quality of a product for relatively um, the same price. I don't plan on changing prices, and I plan to um, hopefully be able to start shipping machines still in less than a month. Um, you know, it all depends on little bits, you know. I'm trying to order extra extra tools, extra cutters, extra cutter inserts, just so that hopefully later on I won't have big delays of, oh, I broke a cutter, or broke an insert, chipped an insert, and you know, I gotta wait for a replacement to come in two, three days, or if I have to order it from overseas, then for a couple weeks. So I wanna make sure that I have kinda everything on hand. And as they come up, if I think I'll need it, I'm just gonna go ahead and order it. Um, you know, as long as the price is reasonable. Some of the prices on these things are, can be astronomical, so I'm trying to get into it um, for a reasonable price and then see what I need as I go. Um, thanks for following along. I appreciate everybody's patience and, and interest in um, the machining side of the forge, not just the coffee side. So you can see the forge being, being born here. <laughs>